when i did Ag, amitabh bachchan's character i had this thing that is a very laid back attitude and lazy with his power when he laughs it sounds like a cough this is what mm-hmm. i thought you know? and uh, 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 you know just said and uh, mr bachchan did that and the film released on very senior police officer called me and said why the fuck is your villain with a fever in the first scene <laughs> <laughs> Hello Ramesh sir. Hi. Sir. Glad to be back at the den to have yeah. yet another conversation. So we are here to talk about uh, this new initiative that you have launched yeah. called Your Film. It's an initiative where people get to choose the kind of film that will be made. Yeah, I mean yeah. the actors, the core team basically the the yeah. core team that puts the, the film I would together. say the creative aspects of ah, it. Yeah. Yeah, the director, the music director. Yeah. So what I found so interesting about it when I read about this initiative is that the art form is being democratized yeah people have a stake in you know what they are getting what they are going to watch like they are getting they are deciding what they will be served hmm. so before coming to cinema i mean like we will talk about it i want to know your stand on democracy as huh. as a you know as a institution that runs a society yeah. i i know that it's not a perfect Uh, what do you call yeah, fair enough, political yeah. institution but i want to know where do you stand yeah, on see, democracy that's a good question see in, in the context of what i meant by democracy is uh, is like everyone getting an opportunity see like uh, you see if you look at a, even if you get into the political aspect of the feudalistic system or whatever a select few only get an opportunity yeah you know whereas every human being has a passion to do whatever they want and uh, they want to do and they don't get the opportunity that is where the discrimination and the so called class difference and frustration all those things crop up which is the truth for every field including politics and cinema yeah. now in the context of that you see if when i was uh, an assistant no i was not an assistant when i was trying to become a director i had a certain opportunity that my father was working in anupurna studios in hyderabad okay so i had a reasonable access yeah. to the industry so i could at least ask my father to introduce me to someone and then take off just by introduction it doesn't work an entry point yeah, yeah. Hmm. but the introduction also is a major thing yeah. now imagine i was born in uh, let us say narsapuram yeah. or i was born in somewhere else in uh, rajol or something there is no way with the same passion with the same everything whatever talent i was supposed to have at that time i don't think i could have done it yeah. i i can't come to hyderabad i might be financially uh, restrained i might have to be doing some work or my uh, studies or whatever it is no the very you know, fact that you got exposed to nice literature at huh. young age that also might not have been possible right if not for uh, no i mean yeah i mean depends on the access i mean yeah, uh-huh. the book you had access have, to them yeah the mm. might have access to mm. probably many people might have that mm. so the point is now see one is we don't have film tools at that time yeah. you know so we are we either have to work as assistants or we have to maybe try and join a film institute or something like that that is the best possible option mm. okay now whereas everyone has access to film tools now mm. the phone is enough to make a film completely yeah. okay and different doesn't make a difference where you are you are in rajol or narsapuram or wherever mm-hmm. because the internet is giving you access to everything in the whole world mm-hmm. for you to understand provided you have the uh, intention and the and the passion of it now you can make the film you don't need the film industry to make a film to prove your talent mm-hmm. but then you need to have an access mm-hmm. access for release Yeah. Yeah, that is that is that is where we are as a as a point. Now it is even more difficult because the more the number of filmmakers become, the more mm-hmm. it becomes difficult for them to have an outlet. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day. Now who decides on the outlet is the next uh, question. Mm-hmm. Which brings back to the primary point of your film what I try to do. Now we we make about 150 films a year in each language yeah. on annually and the and the flop rate is more than 90% it's as far as yeah, scary yeah, yeah yeah but it's not as scary as what you think okay. there is a flop rate in any industry only because it is a glamour industry mm. you kind of tend to focus to illustrate this I, i'll give an example mm. there was a cousin of mine long time back he he wanted to uh, ha- open a bar in a certain road in in maidipatnam area mm. okay so the logic he gave me 
is that there is a nearly five kilometer stretch of a very large colony and there is no bar and restaurant nearby. Hmm. So if he keeps it in the center of that road, you know, this crowd itself will be enough for, for his Run bar business, to yeah. sustain. Okay. And uh, he projected a profit of one crore the first year, two crores the next year or something like that. And it was a miserable failure. Okay. okay. Now, why did it fail? Then he tells me, because the colony people, they don't, if their cars are parked outside, others will come to know that they're drinking. <laughs> because of yeah. that fear, yeah. they keep on going away, I believe. And no one came to him. Now, whether it became a flop because of that or not is not important. But the fact is, he only could think of it after the failure. Yeah, yeah. And what is the difference between this and a film failing? Why will anyone make a film unless he thinks it's, it's going to be hit? Yeah. See, the audience are watching it for two hours. He's making it for six months, one year, sometimes yeah. two years, spending a lot of money, his reputation, work, time, everything. And the audience in two hours get to know it's a bad film. How, does, how, how can that happen? Yeah. But this and my cousin opening a bar is same. <laughs> but the difference is nobody knows about my cousin's bar. But they will right. know if I make a flop, me or anyone, any filmmaker, you know. That's right. because the focus is on the mm. so-called glamour industry. Okay. So, now, the next point is, eventually it is boiling down to a person's decision. Now, when we make a film, no, no matter, like, uh, but uh, coming back to that, 90% films fail, which means 90% of the time filmmakers don't know what they're doing. But <laughs> and who is telling them that they're wrong? The audience are telling them after the release. Yeah. But the by, buyer. The, by, by the time it's too late. Yeah. Not in the buyer, the, the ticket buyer. The yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So everyone else in the intermediate stage, the distributor, the buyer, all of them are in the same zone. They are trying to outguess the general audience. That is the whole point. Mm -hmm. You know, outguessing is a very different uh, and difficult thing. Mm -hmm. Because outguessing technically means you are hoping they will think like that. So conveniently, you will tell yourself the audience want this, the audience want that. Are you, who is the audience? Yeah, yeah. You don't know them. You can't satisfy 10 people around you in the room. Now, how, how will you satisfy the nameless and faceless audience? Mm. So I thought of this concept. So then one more thing which occurred to me, when Rithik Roshan first came in, I never thought Rithik Roshan would become a star. I know him as a person because I used to edit in his studios. Mm. I thought his eyes were too light and this, that, that, this. And then he became a superstar. So who am I? Many, film, many technicians and actors I introduced have failed. Some succeeded. Now, when succeeded, I can say that, yeah, I did it. Spotted the then, then, then what happened when they failed? So, which means some of them I introduced were liked by the audience. Some were not liked by the audience. That is actual mm -hmm. truth. It's nothing to do with me. I am doing it random. Mm -hmm. that, that is the whole point. So, in that context, there is this argument, filmmakers, is about conviction. Mm -hmm. it, it is very nice to hear that. Mm -hmm. But conviction, in another way, is about arrogance. Only I know is arrogance. Only I know is also conviction. <laughs> so only yeah. the only the result of it will prove. If it works, it's conviction. If Doesn't it, is, it? If, yeah, it's, it's arrogance. arrogance. Yeah. yeah. So to one function of your film concept is to minimize that aspect of where your decision alone cannot be at uh, at uh, I mean the deciding factor. Mm. And second is to open up doors to a, each and every one where they're not having this thing because of nepotism, some star's brother, some star's son, only they can make it in the yeah. industry, like the so-called nepotism angle, whatever. Everyone has a fair chance and deciding not by a few individuals in the film industry, decided by the public yeah. themselves. That is where I use the word democracy, hmm. for the people, movies by the people, for the people, to the people. Hmm. Okay? So in that context, now, when a music uh, video releases, sometimes some song uh, like Sony guys release Colovery D, just mm. like that. Mm. It became worldwide uh, international mm. hit. Yeah. No one thought, including the people who made it. For example, once it became a blockbuster, three months they brainstormed and shot it very properly. Yeah. 
and that didn't work. That didn't anywhere work. near. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So the the first quality is made by the people, not by the company, not by Danush, such a big star. Yeah. What they made didn't work. Some random video work means how the hell are you going to even uh, go? I mean, venture into that space. Hmm. I am in my office as a filmmaker. I said, this guy is the actor. This guy is a music director. And I'm the, and my 10 people, either they might say no or yes. Whatever they say, I still feel I know better than them. But the 10 becomes 100. The 10 becomes 1000. I don't think I'll have the same confidence. And also non-interested parties. See, these guys are in the office. They might have a reason or an agenda to say no or yes to me. Because they're all concerned people. Hmm. Unconcerned people, like the voters, they don't have yeah, an agenda. Yeah, yeah. They don't gain anything or lose anything by that. So, honesty at its peak only is going to be there. Hmm. You know? So, it is in that sense, if I have, let us say, if applications of some, some 100 or 200, whatever number come, and because it will create a fatigue for you to compare all of them, hmm. At the den, we shortlist around 30, 40 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if you're putting that for voting, mm -hmm. and uh, maximum votes might be gotten by one person who I might not like, mm -hmm. personally. Who I might not have liked as much as in any of the others. But if I'm making the film eventually for the public, and if the public are saying for some reason they like this guy, yeah. How can I be stupid, our, our, or me or anyone can be so stupid to ignore that? Yeah. Okay, point one. Hmm. Okay, there is a girl, there is an actress, there is an actor. But now cinema is not just about looks. Hmm. They have to act. Exactly. So in the shortlisted people, a few of them are asked uh, to send an audition hmm. of a, saying a dialogue in a certain way and those parameters will be fixed in uh, what is expected of them. Hmm. And then when uh, again they are put for voting. Again, we shortlist in that. So, mm -hmm. it looks good. It looks good more than that. People think he's good. Yeah. That's the point. People think he's saying a dialogue far, these guys far better. Mm -hmm. After these two are passed, then we are making a show. Mm -hmm. uh, Where you know, will it be streamed? Look, that that, that, uh, that we are still working out. Okay, okay. In the show, mm -hmm. I, I will act as a certain moderator. I'll be throwing challenging questions to them because there's a personality test, there's a spontaneity test and everything. Mm. And uh, in the course of that, who finally gets the final vote will be the lead actor and then the lead actress. Mm. And RGV then will produce the film, mm. completely going by the decisions made by the public mm. where we are not creatively involved at all. Mm. And the same thing applies to the director. If I'm, if I'm giving a director this scene to shoot, and if they do, and we put the submissions, and I'm not talking about production values, because yeah. the people who do might not have the resources to spend on a set and X and Y. Yeah. I'm only looking at performances, and I'm only looking at how skill. they put it together, skill, mm. skill of a director, mm. okay? So, and all the rest of the things, non-creative aspects, will be given to the directors. See, when I made Shiva, I had no clue about how to make a film, mm. you know? But I had a communication clarity. I could explain to people what I want, the technicians. I don't need to know the lenses. Mm. But I can say I need a close-up of this range. Yeah. You know, why do I need to know what lens to put? That is, that is the That's whole That's the job part. of the cinematographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah correct. Uh, so this is the overall thing. Mm. Now, what it does, one, like I said, it is giving an opportunity to everyone, and the best is decided by the people. Mm not by the filmmakers. Mm. No, Ram Gopal Arma is not deciding. Right. Even in the show, I am, I am doing all that uh, throwing challenges at them, and but the final decision will be made by the people, people. Who, yeah. they who they liked. No? Yeah. And second point is, you see, I am not against the so-called word nepotism because in a, in a democracy, always a father gives uh, yeah. whatever he has to his son or brother or whoever he wants. Mm. But this is an option where if you think they are, see, if Chiranjeevi wants his son to have, why would he want your son and my son to have? Yeah. Why would Dhirubhai Ambani, he will give his money to Mukesh Ambani, why will he give it to us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who decides who is the best in, in that context? Yeah. But if people are deciding who is the best, then the so-called nepotism goes for a toss. Yeah, yeah. Because of that, because they are not concerned. 
each of the voters, if they are given a choice, they will also give it to their son only. Yeah, yeah. simple. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know. Yeah. 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 The funny so thing is, then, yeah. to add on, I believe it is people who uphold nepotism, right? They yeah. continue to support legacy actors because of, the, you know, whatever fandoms and all. People play a crucial role in the progression of nepotism. That's all. The, Correct. In, in every field, not yes, just yes, in yes, uh, of course, cinema. Of course, yeah. of course, yeah. Hmm. So whether it's a politician or a rich man or whatever in the field, they, they will, because they're in the ambience, in the, the whole familial system is what which makes a society. Yeah. And nepotism is an integral part of us. Yeah. So now, this is one part. Third part is, you, if you talk about film awards, now film awards, that is one of the biggest flaws in that system is, if, if Salman Khan is nominated for this picture, Shah Rukh Khan for that picture, someone is Ranbir for some other picture, are you giving award to characters or actors? Acting is an ability. Now acting is coming from within the script and the character in that particular picture. Okay, so all three films are different. All three or four films are different. Mm -hmm. All characters are different. How are you comparing between them? Yeah. And the effect of the character is a function of the script, mm -hmm. function of how the director made it. So many things come together. Mm -hmm. But true test of acting is if uh, four or five actors are given the same thing. Ah, same material. Same material. Mm -hmm. if, if I am challenging, I want you to envision a situation that you, you just got a call that your mother is very unwell, she's on the deathbed, how would you react? If I'm giving the same thing to five people, all five spontaneously show, hmm. that is when you can uh, compare and see who is better. Yeah. That's only two tests of acting. Hmm. And this also the people are deciding. Hmm. It could be a dance or it could be something I want you to make up and tell me, hmm. extempo that there was an accident which happened and how would you describe what happened in the accident? You know? So how he will say it in what pitch of tone and all that, which is what acting is about. Yeah. You know? So similarly, there's a music. Now, if there is, a, I mean, music taste differs so much, but uh, so everyone, like we talked about films, they also mm. put in so much of effort to make the track thinking it will be a hit. Mm. Like to give an interesting anecdote, Raman told me once, he said, Ramu, sometimes when I compose a tune, sitting in my music room, mm. I, f I feel it will be the best blockbuster of the year. I am so convinced about it. And when it comes out, people ignore it. Yeah. They don't even say it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone is indifferent. Even yeah. the music company doesn't promote it also. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I do a song, which I myself think, but I had, I have no time, I had to deliver because they're, sh they're, they're going for shooting, I have no time. Mm. So I kind of wrap it up, whatever I get, and that becomes a super hit. Mm. Why? Because the people liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For whatever reasons. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in the same context, the, the, there is some songs I don't like, I can't believe why they became hits. And like the, likewise, I, I love a song and it doesn't work for the audience, you know. So then if uh, I am giving a situation and then asking them to make a tune and uh, who likes uh, which tune the most, then that is the music. Why should my arrogance come in? I am just one of the people. I am also one of the ticket buying audience. So just because I am a filmmaker doesn't mean I know better than them. Because it's already proved that they know better than me. Right. Same thing with lyricists. Same thing with cinematography. The writer. All yeah, the writer. Everyone. In that, so in this whole exercise, uh, if it comes, so it is made by the people for the people mm. to the people, and in somewhere in the future, I want even to make it ecosystem of the entire business where they also can buy the film, they also can produce yeah. the film, yeah. in in parts. It's a dream for okay. many to be very honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and they know it is. This is a film being done completely without any corruption, without any arrogance and overconfidence through a system of where the people are already, most of it are approved by the people. Right. Already. Right. Yeah. Sir, I have a huge doubt, sir. You, you're coming across as a completely different person because you always have come across as someone who prioritized self-expression over yeah. approval, applause, validation. Even now I do that. I mean, see, th that is hmm. my whole point. But now uh -huh. everything you, you are doing is kind of reverse engineered to cater to the audience, right? Yeah. 
So there is a difference. Confession. But it's, that is the point. See, mm. so see, I, I, it is not that this won't exist. Mm. Okay. This okay. is an alternative. Okay. 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 Yeah. Hmm. See, I would. I want to live by my own uh, life. I hmm. I want to live by my own decisions, my own taste, and my sensibility. That is a natural, integral part of me, hmm. which I don't think I'm ever going to leave. Hmm. 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 But I'm acknowledging and accepting the flaws right. in that. Right. And I'm building an alternative hmm. for that. Okay. That that is what I'm saying. Right. You know? Eventually, self-expression is what art is about. But here, I'm looking at the opposite side. What you think is art might not be thought as art by the majority of the people. Hmm. Yeah. Right. So, can you make a film for that in that system also? Is an option? Is a new thing which is what I'm trying to invent hmm. here? Hmm. Yeah. Understood. Sir, almost 10 years ago, there, there is this very popular video. I remember watching it 10 years ago, uh, right after Ice Cream came out, where you address aspiring filmmakers. Mm. I'm not sure if you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. It's, yeah. it's a 30-minute clip where you literally take two cameras on which Ice Cream was shot on. You tell them yes, that this yes. one costed 25,000, yeah. this one costed 15,000. So it is possible to make a film with with the limited resources that you have. Just go with your friends, have fun, yeah, work yeah. for correct, 10 days. Correct. You're not losing anything because... You are enjoying it. When you when you enjoy something, it's not work. And likewise, you are not investing correct, anything. Correct. You made you sold the idea that filmmaking is very accessible, which I think is great. Uh, you know, digital came in, filmmaking became quite accessible. You sold that idea beautifully. But Ramu sir, you were also someone who told J D Chakravarti that I need thousand people, thousand extras to shoot that theater scene in Satya. Yeah. You are also the same guy. Who shot that company, the train shot, which you said that, you know, the, the we, we camera did had existing to, lights and all. Yeah, 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 you did with whatever was there in that, just you, the cinematographer Correct. and the sister. So, there is this myth surrounding cinema, right? Cinema, 200 yeah. people to, uh, you know, shoot something. At what point did you realize that it's a myth and that needs to be demystified? See, when in, uh, at that time, when I said you can shoot a film with a 5D camera or a cell phone camera, hmm. the point is you don't need access to film equipment yeah, is what yeah. I was trying to ha, emphasize. Ha. But the problem there is even if you make a film in that context, hmm. by the time you can take it forward, and this is C, hmm. you can manufacture a product. Now, where is a shop? Where is a showroom to showcase it uh, for the consumer? That is, that is where the problem is, mm. you know. So that is what which is being addressed by here. So as RGB, then I'm committing to make the film and release it what you make. Whoever wins the mm. thing. Mm -hmm. Now, second is, now thousand people in the theater sequence, because it's a crowd scene. Mm. I need this much of people to run because of whatever, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Okay. Coming to the company example, See, like generally, anywhere you shoot, I'm sure even till today, they will book a train and put this light, that light and everything and they'll do all kinds of things. Beautify it. Yeah. Hmm. You beautify it, don't know, and they don't believe it won't, it'll work without that. Mm -hmm. hmm? In fact, recently, uh, Christopher Nolan, uh, you know, I've, I read in an interview, where he said, when I didn't have money, when I'm making my insomnia, the small films at that time, I used to use natural light source and whatever I could there. Mm. Now, I am spending, because I have my position, I have a lot of money, I am spending all that money to recreate the same natural thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. So, so the point is, my cameraman is a very, very radical guy, Heman Chaturvedi, in company. Mm. He told me, can, can we just use these lights, uh, what are existing? And I said, do it, will it work? I said, yeah, I just read it in the meter and it is showing whatever uh, Kodak is claiming. Hmm. You know? It is, it is showing... You for know, the, the in, yeah. number for exposure. Yeah, yeah, correct. Ha, ha. Uh, so I thought, buddy, if we can't doubt Kodak, man. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> you know, as a yeah. company is claiming, this is what it is. Yeah. Just leave it. And we went ahead and worked. However, in the same film, in a sequence where Ajay Dev and Vay Cobra shoot a police inspector, huh. something went wrong in that. I don't know some exposure, but not, nothing to do with what Hemant was saying. Hmm. It is some fault. Four or five very lengthy shots became completely pixelated. You won't believe it till today. Not one person told me what were the shots. <laughs> okay. I know a lot of people who praised that scene and they also didn't care. It is there. 
<laughs> you okay, know, the final version that I saw. Because the drama was so intense, they didn't care. It, it just went ahead, you know. It, mm. you know. So when you are being particular, you look at all the mm. good and bad points of it because it's your film. Mm. You look at the photography, you look at that. But if you look at Netflix or something, it is constantly films are coming. All photography looks the same. Mm. Oh my God! Because yeah, you're absolutely. not being particular yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So every time you keep on discovering, like when you ask me this question, at what mm. time? most obvious thing which uh, like i'm i'm a huge sound enthusiast for mm, example mm. okay i i'm so particular about effects right from my first film and mm. this and i used to mix in prasad 70 mm mm. you know serio mixes uh, dolby dts and and we're simulating i mean the theater atmosphere the surround speaker this that this blah, blah. Mm. i did that at one point of time i uh, in hyderabad i met someone and uh, said this is a very good engineer mixing engineer someone told me so i went to that address and it's a house you know so i thought by my mistake they must have given me something else uh, then someone came and said please come what is this no it is the mixing theater is inside it is a small house yeah and the room was some 8 feet by 4 feet or 8 feet by 5 feet how can you do final mixing of a film in this you know i asked him that question the engineer it the 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 monitors were there and this and i hardly you can't even turn around it huh. is that small huh. you know how can you do final mixing in this he said so no matter how big the room is your ears only hear it na so <laughs> i, I, I <laughs> do it on I, my headphones he said so how do i hear it so i will give another set of headphones Or, and imagine to understand this truth. It took me twenty five years, and something which is staring at you. What is the line? No matter how big the, your ears hear it. Yeah. Okay. Over one point. Second point is, in the mixing theater, generally, there is a console in the center of the auditorium. We are trying to simulate that. That is where the audience will sit. because where you are sitting hmm. you are calibrating everything for your place where you yeah, are sitting yeah. in theater one guy will be the front one yeah. guy in the back <laughs> one guy will be right all, next yeah. to the surround speaker yeah. and every theater has different acoustics yeah. the absorption quotient of the acoustics material to the length and breadth and uh, whatever the number of people sitting in the theater which act as sound reflectors all of that will be every, very different in every theater and you are here fixing on this <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know? so that is irony so in trying to be specifically mm. i think perfect that is where you waste the maximum time mm. and uh, resources okay mm. like one uh, one famous director told me uh, on particular sequence in a film vfx like a very big budget film mm-hmm. you know? so one company said some 25 crores for that sequence and another company said some 37 30 35 or something okay the director told me sir i don't know who can make it better both of them are big companies okay now i don't know how vfx process of thing is done i am not an expert technician on that but after thinking we decided to go with the 35 guy only because we had the money mm. so we thought more they ask for the better the they bet. will do <laughs> 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 yeah now a classic example you know adipuri special effects and hanuman special effects which is one of the biggest thing yeah, yeah, yeah. now adipuri is done by foreign companies and wherever blah blah god knows how many hundreds of crores and uh, this guy prashant verma or some karimnagar town or wherever they made it there that guy gave a very similar answer when prashant asked how can you make a film like hanuman with the guy from marima Sir, so uh, uh, wherever they do it happens in a room only. No, he said. <laughs> Same factor an, at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. whether it's in Australia yeah. or Karim Nagar, it happens with one guy who's doing it, and yeah. and the same thing, you know. Mm. And I I have a suspicion that Prashant Verma made the film even lesser cost, much lesser, <laughs> because these days you are scared to say lesser cost because that is a cheap film. No one will buy it. But right. in comparison, no matter how much he said. But compared to Adi Purushottam, it is a super cheap mm-hmm. film, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we know the result yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. So basically, in coming back to this, what technology we have today, hmm. 
I feel is uh, we are in state of denial. We don't want to accept it is there. Mm -hmm. You know, at how cheap and how creative we can be. I will give one more example. Please. I love this One guy gave me, he, he made me hear a song of a new music director. I just kind of freaked out on it, you know. Mm. And the acoustics, the sounds and everything was so rich. You're hearing on earphones or some sound system? A sound system. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. But the point is the acoustics. See, uh, like, uh, um, like strings and cellos and all that, you normally don't get to hear that kind of a broadness mm. coming from a keyboard. Mm. You know? Yeah, okay. that's, that's what I'm saying. You know? Okay. So this only comes in like a very like a London Symphonic Orchestra, Royal Philharmonic, which is used by Steven Spielberg, James mm. Cameron, mm. like the very expensive bands. You know, mm. it has that kind of a sound. Mm. Okay. So I asked him, so who, who did this uh, track? He said Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. So I really fell off. And that's what I was thinking. It sounds like that. Mm. You know. I said, what do you mean Royal Philharmonic Orchestra? They'll be so expensive. I mean, you have no, only big, big Hollywood productions can afford that, you know. Mm. He said, he basically, those guys have given the notes that Sarigama Padani, you know. Yeah, yeah. Those notes, notes uh, yeah. As uh, in, in various combinations like cello strings, flute, this thing, and something else, something, trombones and something, all these notes as a kind of a gift to some music college, okay? So he had that side and he managed to get those things. And he made his own tune. Okay. Okay. He made his own tune and those notes he made them play because there's a combination of that only, no? Right, right, right. So without one rupee, he got Royal Film to play for him. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. the rhythms anyway are available in thousands. And then he sent this, his finished tune, he mailed it to some 15 top singers. Just asking, sir, I don't have money, I just made this. If you like my tune, if you think there is some merit in it, you please sing it for me. And if I manage to sell it, I will sell you, send your... Cut. Uh, I'll send your cut. Huh. And he sent it to some 25 people, out of which three to four responded. And that response, and it's all happening on email. That response could be they, they just didn't have any work at that time. Hmm. Or they, because all singers have their own studios right hmm. now. And they're not doing anything and they like the tune. They like whatever is said. They, they respond to it. Like how a producer will respond to a director whose script he really likes. Hmm. That happens all the time in society. Hmm. You kind of uh, give one hand forward because you like that. Hmm. And... He had four or five responses in some 25 people he sent, out of which he had a choice to select. Select? Wow. He had a choice. Yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah. My, my Not, point is that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and without touching an instrument, without touching anything, he got all, that is where technology is. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So today, music composer, studio, this, that, and drums, flute, this player, that player, all that is nonsense. So, but it might be a little harsh for the artists, right? But who is the artist? Artist, why is he not an artist? The guy who's done it. No, no, I mean the you know, players. No, I'm and, saying, uh -huh. what, what are human beings about? We're all the time trying to compile resources to create a new product. Hmm. There is no such thing as art as special. Right. Anyone who's thinking hmm. and making something which is non-existent hmm. is also an artist. No, I, can you repeat that? No, no. See, a person who's creating a new product, hmm. whether he's the artist or not, is not the point. Okay, I'll give, oh. you, I'll give you one example. Hmm. Okay. Rahman, when uh, the, there's this one uh, producer, Subhash guy, okay? Mm -hmm. And he was making this film called Yuvraj. Now, Yuvraj is Salman, Katina, this and that. And, and Rahman is notorious for dealing, giving the music. So Swaj is very, very this about it. And at, at, a, at a certain time, he, was, he wrote a nasty, stinking letter to Rahman. How can you delay my dates are here, Salman's dates are here, and you're not giving the song, this and that, you know? Mm. And Rahman basically said, OK, I'm, I'm in London. I'm come, I'll come to Bombay on my way to Chennai. And we'll meet at uh, the Sukhvinder Singh studio. And we'll, I'll make the song for you there, OK? So it's OK. And on that day, he went to Sukhvinder. 
and Rahman was on the way from the airport and Sukhvinder was making some tune. Okay? And uh, Subhajji asked him, so what are you doing? He said, uh, Rahman called me and asked me to make a song for you. No? Subhajji was so angry, he thought because I am putting pressure, he is making someone else do the song for me. Mm -hmm. And he thought by mistake, Sukhvinder told him. Okay? Then Rahman came. And Rahman said, uh, okay, hi, hi, and then, yeah, did you make something in front of Subhajji? only asked him. And Subhajji said, yeah, let me listen. And he heard, yeah, it's nice. What do you think? He asked Subhajji. Subhajji flew up the thing. And I am paying you crores of rupees as my music director. And you are making Sukhvinder make a tune for me? You know, and, uh, the, and on, uh, you have the guts to say that in, right in front of me. And if I want Sukhvinder, I will sign him. Who are you to take my money and then make Sukhvinder do, do the music for me? Rahman's answer is one of the greatest I heard in my life. Rahman said, Sir, you are paying for my name, not for my music. Okay? If I am endorsing it, it becomes mine. Okay? And now, you happen to be here. How do you know where I took Tal music from? How do you know wherever, whichever music, my driver could have done it? Maybe someone else, whatever else. The point, you know, and then, See, it is a tune. And Rahman publicly acknowledged it. He acknowledged it in Chaya Chaya song, that it is Sukhvinder's uh, original tune, and also for uh, this. Now, what happened after this, he asked him, but if you don't like it, there's no argument. Yeah. I'll make something else. But you can't question me about what is the origin, or origin of the song. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, he said, I don't like it. It's terrible. Okay, I will go to Chennai and send it. And then he went off. Yeah. And on way to the airport, he called Sukhinder and said, I, I, I like the track really, so just uh, mail the thing to me. And then one year later, Sukhinder gets a check and uh, he asks the manager, what is this for? Uh, Rahman sold that song to another film, the Slumdog Millionaire. <laughs> Jai Ho's song's origin is that. And Rahman publicly acknowledges there was Sukhinder's origin in that. So then Sukhinder told me, a song is not a song. See, if I'm a director, if I'm a director, there is an actor's contribution. There is something, a like DOP puts a light which should look so good, which I did not anticipate. Likewise, so many people come. All of them are being channelized through a certain emotional impact, what I want to create. That doesn't necessarily mean each and everything I created. Mm. So as a music director, he's taking inputs from everyone. A suggestion, sometimes in Rangila, when Ariharan Ari was just trying to practice, he was just doing a voice exercise, and suddenly Rahman said, let's start the song with that. So that technically is Ariharan's contribution, if you look at it. But it is Rahman's discovery of that, to use it in the song is what makes Rahman. Hmm. That is what the principal difference between a, a, a director and the primary art, and a music director and the primary arts. Of, co of course, he's also a yeah. musician. That is one part of it. Hmm. Musician is different and music director is different. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So, the Subhash guy is known for his taste. Now, why would he have made a mistake of not realizing Jeho, yeah. the effect of Jeho, the Oscar winning song, is because he was blinded at that time due to anger, his anger. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, coming back to this in, in the same thing. Like when we had, we we're talking about... Uh, Film institutes, for example. You don't film. approve of film institutes, no, no, film right? Film institutes, I think, are the biggest sham, and I feel so sorry for the students who join them. Why? Because, see, even from Pune Film Institute, I'm talking about 19, I think it's existing since uh, uh, early 70s, 70s or something, yeah. Yeah, something mm. like that. I've never heard a single guy coming from the institute and becoming anything in life. A very few, handful, actually. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe on Ketan Mehta at that time. We do we know Chopra. We know Chopra. Hirani, yeah. yeah, maybe handful. No. Yeah, and also they were not from that. Like I, I think Raju Hirani is from editing department, mm -hmm. for example. Okay, but the point is not that. See, those guys, whether they went to the institute or not, they would have still be institute. Wouldn't have taught Nun Chopra or uh, or uh, Raju Hirani. Hirani or anybody like that. Mm -hmm. You know, because if, eventually, if it's a professional course. By definition, it has to be updated to today's times. Yeah. You should teach how to make kantara. 
you should teach how to make KGF 2. Now you are talking about battleship Potemkin and bloody Citizen Kane and all that which has absolutely no relevance. Like recently two writers came from the institute and they were telling me about this first act, second act, this and that and what are the rules of screenplay writing. I, I asked them, did you see animal? And uh, they said, yes. Can you please apply your principles to animal screenplay? I said, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So, if art is an expression to basically, I mean, it, it, at a certain time, probably there was a certain confirmation, confirm, confirmation where this is how a film should be. Mm. You know, but when... Uh, in the social media and the internet time, when everyone can express, it becomes expressive. It is no longer communication, mm. pure pure art. I am saying. Mm. So a Sandeep Wanga can never come from a film institute, for example. Mm. That is him as a person. That's what he believes uh, cinema to be, his characters to be. You should encourage that as an individual to put some 20, 30 people and tell them this is how cinema should be made. I am not saying they say only that. Mm -hmm. But it seems like that's what they understand. Maybe it is not in the intention of the institute also. Right. You know? Yeah. Like, for example, I'm sure, you know, Steven Spielberg was not, not allowed in uh, at least five top institutes yeah, at yeah. that time. Yeah. You know? So, today, only way you can do it, you know, if I see, for example, I recently put a test uh, in the run-up to this Your Film context. Mm. I gave a scene from Satya and I wanted people to... Which one? A scene from Satya, uh, like which scene? that there is this uh, Kalu Mama and Manoj and they mm. decide to kill the commissioner. Right, right, right. Huh. I asked them to shoot it in their own style. Mm. You know, ch you can change the uh, characterizations, the dialogue, the setting, the location, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But you have to stick to the same content was my uh, brief. Mm. I got at least 30 to 40 subjects out of which 4 to 5 are better than what I shot. Four. Now, those four to five, who are they? No. I know them now because of that. Somebody shot, sent from Azerbaijan. Somebody sent for, from Bombay. Somebody sent from Vaisag. Mm. You know, somebody sent from somewhere else. So, all those are potential directors mm. who do not have access. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So, which means at that time, Ram Gopalam became now only because of an access to Nagarjuna in some hope. Mm -hmm. How will Nagarjuna know if there are 100 better Ram Gopal Varmas in Gudiwada and Dedi there in Chira Nagarjuna? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anywhere, anywhere. Yeah. You don't know. But now we have the technology to find out that. Mm -hmm. that that's my whole point. Mm -hmm. You know? So, I might not be able as a producer to make all of them. But we have access to them. Different producers might connect to different people. Mm -hmm. If there's a database of all these available talent there, which is pretty much like how you go to a store to choose what best you want, you have a store of talent. Right. Whether it's in music or, or direction or acting or whatever it is for that matter. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So the industry will gain because it has much more choice and options to take from. And they will, the people will gain because they have the opportunity to showcase their talent in whichever way they want. Mm. So it works for everybody. Hmm. In this, hmm. not one person or two person. Wow, sir! I was going through that website, sir, of your film, and I read that uh, you know uh, the test that you gave for a director, yeah. where two people, Correct. where a man is uh, told to kill someone, and he's you know not able to comprehend uh, that that Correct. grotesque Correct. reality. And in the notes, you said that you are free to add different characters, you can change yeah. the dialogue, but the essence and the content of the scene Correct. has to be retained. And the important note that I liked is, I'll read it hmm. to the people yeah, who yeah, yeah. was not. The test is only to see how you can interpret characters and extract performances. Yeah. Okay. So, I want to know this from you as someone who has directed a lot of intricate character studies. What is the best way to interpret a character? Hmm. Is it, say, draw references from similar characters that have been portrayed in, say, classics or better films hmm. or from your observation from the people that you have seen or by putting yourself in the shoes of that character yeah. what is your process? I would say I would say little of all what you mentioned okay you know hmm. to, to give an example see if uh, when, I, when I was shooting Satya you know there was a scene where in, in the bar this guy called Jagga and some guy was sitting and talking hmm. and Satya comes and uh, he shoots Jagga hmm. 
Now, the guy who's sitting opposite him was a junior artist. He has no role in the film. So I, I told him before the scene, now imagine you are sitting in a bar and talking. You have no reason to think anything is going wrong. And someone comes and shoots the guy. What do you think you will do? I want you to think about that and do the reaction. I didn't tell him. Hmm. In my mind, I had uh, expectation that he will scream and run or something. What that guy did, he just sat there in stunned silence. Because something as extraordinary as that happens, the brain takes a little while to comprehend, for process. it to react, yeah, yeah. to process. Hmm. You know? Now, he is not a professional actor. He's a junior artist. But something in his common sense or whatever prompted him. I, it shocked me also. So this is where I am interpreting a character not by my design. I just told him what he will do. Hmm. Okay, But his reaction gives me an idea for my later films on the basis of this input. Hmm. That don't go by the obvious reaction. Right. It also can be this. No? Hmm. Like when, when Nana Patekar in Aptak Chapan and his wife, uh, his, uh, wife is killed. No, Nana just uh, turns and says, just do this and that. You know, he just gives a plain order without feeling any emotion. Mm -hmm. Because he is in a kind of a position where he expects something like that to happen anytime. Mm -hmm. So he is not going to behave exactly like uh, probably anyone else in that mm -hmm. situation, you will think. Right. Like in all my years, only once I had a certain thing with Mr. Bachchan, you know, mm -hmm. with all my like where we had an agreement, the disagreement in, in interpreting a certain emotion of how we should perform. In Sarkar, when he, he says, uh, uh, he, has a, he asks his son to get out, okay? So what I told Mr. Bachchan is, well, you were upset with him before. You shouted at him in the dining table. You shouted at him here and there. A man gets angry only when he still has hope. I think this is a situation where you lost hope on the sun. So it is a, it is a very clinical kind of a decision. You should not have any emotion. But he disagreed with me, saying that no matter what, a father trying to get his son away, I think it's too uh, this and that, he disagreed with me. But I, I obviously can't go beyond a point with Mr. Bachchan. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I said, okay, and I shot it the way. And later, in 11 o'clock in the night, he called me and said, uh, Ramu, I've been thinking about what you said. I, I really think you're right. Okay, let's please reshoot that again. Wow. And then we reshot the next day. And he went far beyond what I could uh, thought, what I had imagined. Like a director always will have mm. in his mind, uh, this is how it will look like or seem like, you know. And that is when he came up with that famous gesture. Yes, yes. That is Bachchan. That's not me. Wow. Okay. I own, my brief was only to do it without emotion, cold-blooded, huh. you know. So, okay, now this is an interaction. But each and every one of this will also keep adding to my experience mm. to interpret characters. Wow. So if I say, if, if, uh, if you, and me are you and me are there, we are having a dialogue and mm. suddenly you get angry with me, and uh, you just walk out. Let us say that is the end of the scene. Hmm. As long as that is what the end of the scene is, interpretation of how you show anger, it can be either uh, sometimes deferred by the director, sometimes actor by himself. It doesn't make any difference. As long as it's consistency. Mm -hmm. If he's behaving like that in this scene, the same should reflect in all the other scenes. Mm -hmm. Consistency is the key yeah, thing, yeah. not interpreting every shot by itself. So you can say, how dare you send and you can just throw the coffee cup and go. Or you can just be silent for some time and with a smile you can go. Or you can just uh, not look at me and look here and there and then without looking at me you can take off this and go. There can be any number of ways as long as you are upset and going away. You know, which suits the uh, thing or uh, whatever is happening there. Mm -hmm. So, th all of them are correct. Mm -hmm. It's not that this is better and this is not. Mm -hmm. uh, provided there's a consistency. Yeah, that, that is the key. You know, like if, if you look at uh, Manoj and Satya. Mm -hmm. So, the way he puts his legs up and there's a wild laughter. There's just something uncivilized and you can see the wildness in his eyes. And it's yeah. completely consistent. 
because as an actor, he is one of the most brilliant actors we have. As an actor, he would already work the character in his mind, and his performance is coming from within the character, not just saying the dialogue for the effect. Most of ninety percent of the people just mouth the dialogue; they don't have any character in their head. Mm. Yeah, so I think then it directly depends upon the. Uh, sometimes the director might be very clear. I want this only, and there's nothing wrong with it, in an actor. But I personally believe to prompt the actor to feel for himself is what I most of the time adapt, provided the actor has the capacity. Right. right. If the actor doesn't have brains, that then I have to spoon feed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you been in situations like that, unpleasant situations where you had to? spoon feed actors yeah yeah many times hmm. i mean many times because because spoon feeding because um, uh, i mean the grade of actors of bachchan and manoj vajpayee nana padekar they're they not a uh, i mean they're not common they are exceptions they're yeah yeah they're yeah, exceptions yeah, yeah. yeah most of the time i would say 70% of the time i would i would spoon feed i would brief yeah okay so and the, uh, I was watching a recent interview of yours. And recently, I was watching an interview, and in that you, uh, you know, draw you drew the relation between acting and editing, sir. That was something I didn't realize. It hmm. is so obvious. Hmm. You said that when a viewer is watching a film, he watch he observes only two things the most. First thing is acting. Second thing is editing. I mean, like he doesn't observe it, but it influences the uh, the uh, the viewer the most. Hmm. editing if editing is bad even acting can look bad yeah that what the most very is in, in any great performance you can screw it up in editing editing yeah that's what i meant yeah because see, editing is nothing but uh, if if i'm if i'm watching uh, an actor perform edit is of two things one is the the counter reaction to a person saying the dialogue hmm. if that is not matching what the audience are feeling at any given time they get disconnected Yeah, yeah. A classic case I'll tell you is uh, this film, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Mm. You know, seen Kevin Costner's reactions in the thing. It doesn't is it blank? Yeah, yeah. You know, I was very very uh, intrigued about that because the director of the capacity of Francis Coppola and uh, why would they do do that? I am mm. getting scared seeing the visual and he's just looking blankly at it. Mm. So that could be. It is just my guesswork. Hmm. they felt his character is like that that he doesn't react hmm you know and another example i'll give for, for example mani mani ratnam's ravan in that abhishek has a strange habit of constantly shaking, shaking. his head yeah. yeah you know when i was seeing in the theater whenever it does that in the theater everyone is looking at each other because they they didn't understand that but that that really happen or did okay. they feel like uh. yeah then i came out of the theater and i called abhishek and asked him so i didn't understand what was that mm. he said when mani and he discussed said like like ravan has 10 heads but obviously if in a contemporary thing he can't be having 10 heads so he had 10 thoughts running in his head and he just shakes them off and sticks on one thought is something they discussed apparently mm. now i as an audience don't know that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So even it's a great director like Mani also. We made I made those those mistakes. What we think inside, in the discussion room, and what comes outside. Yeah. Like when I did Ag, Amitabh Bachchan's character, I had this thing that is a very laid back attitude, and lazy with his power, and he has this, uh, uh, like when he when he laughs, it sounds like a cough. This is what mm-hmm. I thought. You know? And uh, 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 you know, just said no, and I thought it was brilliant. And uh, Mr. Bachchan did that, and the film released. One very senior police officer called me and said, "Why the fuck is your villain with a fever in the first scene?" <laughs> <laughs> Because the laid back connected to the cough looked like fever. Yeah, It's absolutely yeah. correct. And you could realize it only after he pointed. Of course, it. That's until then you didn't. No, nobody even told you. No one told okay. me that. That is the point. <laughs> that is the whole point. Yeah. Because see, film is being made in parts. Film is made. It was in a series of decisions taken over a long period of time. Yeah. At various points, every time something else influences you, which is the reason ninety percent fail. How can very senior producers and senior heroes they yeah. believe this film is fantastic? It'll do this much and that much. 
and every tom dick and harry knows it can't <laughs> it's because you get blind mm. you become completely blind to what you are making because of the simple reason you are testing it on your decision yeah i made that call so i compare it with that only only when the person who do not know why he made the call will judge it yeah you, you if i was present in that mani ratnam uh, abhishek <laughs> meeting is possible i would have, i would have done that i would have agreed to that yeah yeah like you know i managed to uh, make bachan also believe na you yeah. know bachan is not a fool i am not a fool <laughs> but we became a fool because uh, this is how it happens you know <laughs> you know you wrote it on your blog almost in 2008 or 9 i was going through it recently and there is one line that i found extremely funny and real also is that the filmmaker is the last person to know that he made a bad film yeah correct it's true otherwise why would he release it yeah <laughs> simple thing is like the famous line the wife is the last to know hmm. <laughs> yeah it is same <laughs> Mm-hmm. And to be honest, the, see the point is you you will have some like, there will be some. Say for example, ten people tell me mm. the film is terrific. They could be lying. They could be uh, they could have been psyched up by me, or they could be having various their agendas. One person truthfully tells me, "Sir, the this film is bad." You no, know? what will happen then? I can either think he's being truthful. or i can think 95% like did 1 5% didn't like it yeah <laughs> he might be the representative but, of yeah, the 95% but we don't know yeah. at that time because yeah. even the reverse it happens yeah like for example like uh, there are a lot of people who didn't like rangila mm. okay they told me that and after it became a blockbuster some everybody loved dawd mm. okay so when when if there some people said dawd is not good then i will say when rangila also they said the same how can you not say that Yeah, yeah. Even if you have not about liking, disliking, this particular scene is bad because of this. Suppose, mm. you know, they said the exact reason. But lot of times you take so-called cinematic liberties, and you will feel okay. He didn't like it. Others will like it. Like classic example of this is uh, in Satya. There is a scene when they are running out of the theater. So this guy spots Satya. and he goes and tells the police and the police come and they surround the theater to catch this guy okay when i was shooting it itself i knew there was a fundamental flaw in it because if the police come in plain clothes they will catch the guy him unexpected when there is a dangerous guy who killed the police commissioner they won't expose them this right yeah where he has got 1000 people around him to yeah. take hostage yeah you know but when i narrated the scene to at least my for me the predominant emotion of that how does he escape without urmila knowing is a gangster mm. that for me is the basic point of the thing so if i can divert the audience's attention to that then they might leave this is what i was hoping for when i narrated it to 10 12 people nobody raised this question success how why yeah. i said okay yeah. mm-hmm. and i did it after i sent the movie uh, to background score in chennai sandeep chota called me in the middle of the night and said uh, ramu the film is fantastic but the theater scene is horrible how can the police be so stupid to do that he said are fuck i thought you know <laughs> one guy <laughs> yeah and also i thought is a flaw because i've been telling the scene independently huh. to my people right. here they see it in a flow of the entire film yeah and then uh, then he said my entire team is shocked how can you make such a fundamental uh, mistake in in this you have to reshoot this and blah 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 something he said and by the time it was too late in terms one and second second i also didn't know how to repair it okay. with this context of satya escaping without urmila also is important mm-hmm. which i think is more important more than important narrative, than, yeah, narrative yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah then this thing of why will the police behave like that yeah. you know so i thought to let it go you know, those decisions that take long right. many right. times right. and out of which films worked and films didn't work also mm. okay and uh, believe it or not after the film release is 25 years now not one guy said that for how i didn't even why did only did. sandeep chautha yeah. <laughs> thought of that which means yeah. now what did sandeep chautha see is saw it without music 
Ah, the maybe tension. entire mm. music and the overall final thing it just kind of yeah got buried. Sailed off. Yeah, it sailed yeah. off, you know. Yeah. Without anyone noticing that, it happens all the time. Let me know. Mm. I will give you two more examples of this. Mm. In Godfather, okay, there is a scene when Sonny Corleone gets a call from his sister that she's been beaten by. Mm. Yeah. Mm. He comes in anger. He gets into the car. And Tom Hazen comes running and he signals to some bodyguards and they get into another car. Cut to the car is going on the highway. Okay. Now the car is there come and it takes a turn, it comes at a tall gate, it stops. There's some other car slightly backing up or something happening. And this guy gives the money and that guy drops the coin and he bends down. And these guys get down and then uh -huh. they shoot, shoot and he falls down, right? And then again they shoot, they kick his body, then they get into the car and then the car goes off and then this montage shots of the glass breaking this and that. What was the follow car doing no. all this time? <laughs> now, there's obviously there's no traffic, which is the reason they could take that much of a yeah. time to kill him. Mm. And there's no traffic that is not stuck in traffic, that is not yeah. established. Yeah. And that they sh showed in the same shot. So if Tom Hagen said, Usko bulao, or something like that, yeah. call him. Which means by that guy time that guy came and got into the car, there could have been a considerable yeah. time gap is what I can assume. Yeah. But they showed them getting in the yeah, car in the same the shot. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is a mistake I found when after, my, maybe on my 15th time watching. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think many people still realize. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, like like my likewise in Shiva there's a scene when Raghuvaran is given money by Brahmaji. So you're ruining classic for me, sir. Raghuvaran gives money to Brahmaji. So when he kills uh, this guy in the car when they meet, you know, in the night time. Mm -hmm. So that guy is shown as a betrayer. Right. The guy why he gave the money to. That is my idea. Mm. My uncle. He saw Shiva some eight times and six times he saw, Oh, that guy and this guy are same <laughs> eyes. <laughs> so, yeah. so, my point is, it's a fallacy that people should understand everything in a film. Mm. That itself is a big uh, mistake. Mm. When you watch English films, even in my... Uh, most of the time we didn't understand. Most of it. I'll give you an example. When I saw Rambo in college, mm. you know, I saw it some 10, 12 times, Rambo. More than 15 years later, I, I came to know that that's, that's the, they are Russians and there is some <laughs> Vietnam war and I'm happening, mm -hmm. you know. And I, because I read a very old review of Rambo where they are claiming it's such a big hit because of the patriotic angle of what the Americans were feeling about Russia and in the aftermath of the Vietnam war. Huh. Okay. None of them I knew in Vijayawada. <laughs> and why did I see it 10 times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What I saw is Rambo is a hero. Yeah. Whereas against him is a villain. Yeah. And then I'm seeing his muscles, his guns and this and that. But my, uh, paisa was sold. Yeah, simple. Look, who that guy is, who those guys were in the cages, that's a different Doesn't visual. Matter. That's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think public watch films even now like that. So you only the critics who watch with the critical eye. Mm -hmm. General, if, if you look at the public reviews. Mm -hmm. Second half, thoda kheesh diya, lekin kya hai? Pura, theek hai, theek hai. Uh, they are so superficial about the film. No, you said this about Adi Brahmud also, right? Yeah. That you watched the film 17 times, one time maybe for the hero Correct. and one time for elephant. And then you said people at Annapurna Studios were saying that the film became a hit because, yeah, you know, some, that, yeah, that yeah. would yeah. be Annapurna Studios, of, some writers. Yeah, some the writers. writers who wrote Adi Brahmud. Yeah. They, they like, think it's a hit because of the sentiment of the... Andhra. No. Forest. Of the forest goods being taken for away <laughs> to another country. Yeah. Yeah. So, in, in effect, what I'm trying to say, <laughs> cinematic liberty, by definition, from the time Alfred Hitchcock termed that word, is always taken. Hmm. Okay? You never know when it will work or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because if you don't want to take a cinematic liberty and go logical, the chances of it failing are even more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like oh my God, there's yeah. a great line William Friedkin said, uh, the, the director of Exorcist and French Connection. Mm -hmm. He said, film is supposed to create an emotion. Mm -hmm. you know? Many times, people concentrating on the story is the reason for film's failure. 
instead of trying to provoke an emotion. That's one of the greatest lines I heard. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you're trying to stick to the story. You're telling a story is different. For example, uh, let us say I will tell you a small story. Hmm. No. So this is one very middle class fa family. This hmm. opens with their hmm. their hand to mouth existence, and they have a child. And it opens on the woman doing puja, and she comes, and uh, Ian and his husband talk about what's happening in the family and all. Mm. Then he gets a call from his father. He said, I'm, uh, I'm, I know your, your troubles and all that, but you have to look after your brother also. My brother is coming, so please take care of him and all that. And when mm. he tells the wife, she has a problem. If we don't have, what will we do to him? Mm. If I open Shiva like this, this is Shiva's story. <laughs> okay, now it is exactly Shiva's story. Mm. Okay, now if I'm opening it with one car coming, the crane car mm -hmm. and I didn't tell who they are, why the hell they have a problem, okay. and the characters never come in the film yeah. except for the guys who are beating, mm. you know. So I am not showing detail, but by the end of the first five minutes of the sequence, people are just gripping the Hooked. seats. Yeah. So that is what is an emotion. Mm. But if I want to establish who his brother is, why he is coming here, what did his father said and all that, then Shiva won't remain Shiva. Right. So that is when you are emphasizing on the story rather than provoking with an emotion. And cinema is about emotion. Wow. It has to create a high. Sir, so my follow-up question is, you just said this, right? Uh, hmm. You said that Aag is the film that you made with utmost passion and yeah. most care. And Satya is the film that you made without actually, Correct. you know, caring. In, in, the, the thing that you just said, right, where you're trying to create something, where you're trying to stick to a story. Yeah, yeah. Is that, that's what happened with uh, those films also, right? And how do you see the relation between see, uh, preparation versus creative output, randomness versus creative output? In my beginning of my career, I rarely had a script. I rarely, I was writing scenes on the set or changing it even while the scene is going on and things like that. Hmm. And uh, I started having bound scripts uh, at a certain time, especially in the Bombay corporate cultural time, maybe around 10 years back. Mm. My maximum flops came from bound scripts. My maximum hits came from no script. <laughs> and the difference, I think, is when you are evolving something, something about your gut feeling goes in terms of you are you're building it brick by brick. You also don't know where it's reaching. You are trying to reach and you are constantly, your mind is engaged in the mm -hmm. context because you don't know exactly where you are going. In a bound script, you already know exactly where it is because it is so, so you kind of, uh, you lose the soul somewhere mm. and you start uh, building it without your, without your involvement being there because you are just mm. copying what is there on the script. It becomes too clinical. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I would think, I mean, but that doesn't mean I didn't make flops when I did the other way. Like hmm. without a script, they also made massive flops, hmm. you know. So I think it, you can't really say this is the right way, that is the right way. But I feel both of them have their flaws and their, I mean, strong points, I would like right. to say. And you stated that story is the one of the most overrated yeah, facets. Yeah, that I believe. Yeah, can you elaborate on that? See, because, see, the point is, you know, if... if uh, you take a horror film, like a, like a booth, for example. Mm. In my mind was this husband not knowing what is happening with his wife and blah, 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 blah. Okay. The film came out. There is a scene in, uh, in which uh, uh, Ajay Devgan and Urmila are sitting on steps and they're talking emotionally about what's happening to them and this and that, you know. When I was sitting in the Ross Theatre in Bombay, I overheard someone saying, Something will happen, you just wait and watch it. Something will come from behind them. So he is not concerned about <laughs> what I'm showing. Yeah. Because it's a horror film. So You've right. come to get scared. Now don't tell me a story. Right, right, right. Hmm. No? That, 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 that is the point. Hmm. So if you can make them jump out of the seat 10, 12 times, that is the success of a horror film. Hmm. If you look at the paranormal activity, there's yeah. no story. Yeah. You will just create some time pass in between to get to the next scare moment. Yeah. Like when King Kong reboot came, the first version, one day I messaged Mr. The Peter, Bachchan. The Peter Jackson one? Yeah. Uh -huh. I messaged Mr. Bachchan, uh, Sarkar, what are you doing? He said, I'm watching King Kong. I said, how is it? He said, Barry is 40 minutes and it didn't come in. No. <laughs> Which means you come to see King <laughs> Kong. Don't tell me a story yeah. now. <laughs> Wo log kaun hai, kyun us island mein gaye hai, unka inter Oh, sab mat batao. 
if you are showing a king kong holding i want to see it the moment i come with excitement i want to see it <laughs> right you know this is something i think filmmakers across mm -hmm. irrespective of time periods they miss out on this including me no matter how many times we learn mm. we'll still make the same mistake <laughs> right <laughs> because <laughs> at the time you make in the new film you are in that mindset right you don't really look at you can't transform yourself into the mind of the audience what mm. exactly they are thinking now that again also you don't know how much hype it created what about the trailer they liked in the eventuality yeah 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 so i think a director not knowing the audience the mind state in which he made the film to match it to the guy who's entering the theater is an impossibility mm. it is not possible if it happens is out of luck it can't be out of uh, design and now again since we are talking about filmmaking your film web, uh, i on that your film website i saw that again the note for the cinematographers was that i don't care about uh, you know the production values and all you just have to film a 45 to 60 second uh, clip of a girl sitting in a room again you said that it's not production values that matter yeah. it's about the camera angles it's about mm. in uh, the moments that you compose that matter the most so as someone who has you know who's popular for you know uh, changing the way camera is uh, used it used to be very traditional before yeah, yeah. you used to come up with very unconventional you are popular for, for for that right what according to you sir is good cinematography mm. see for me cinematography is not about what you are showing mm. it's about how you are showing how you are showing it could be an angle in the context of whatever the thing is you know mm. for example the what I, what you mentioned just now what i put in the your film thing maybe it could be a voyeuristic thing like a guy without knowing the girl and just angles are kind of very subjected to some one's point of view mm. or to capture it in the same street when she is walking or somehow uh, in the focusing elements to keep her in out focus for some time mm. and this anyone can have an interpretation how you are showing the subject i think is what modern day cinema does it is not about using great lighting no. lighting is a separate art mm. completely camera is a view i it's i for me mm. and i has a mind behind it and the mind gives a context to the how the i sees it the i of the beholder or the one yeah i i mean if the camera is a beholder ah, okay. yeah mm. so there is no dialogue there there is no story there is no scene happening it is just a view point of one i which is what the, i think purest uh, thing of cinematography is so if you had to look back at your filmography and say some shots i mean see i always like that in your films it's not about beauty it's yeah. the opposite of beauty if you take something like a satya or a or a rakta charitra what are some shots that you are proud of sir like na personal favorite if you ask me mm. that shot where uh, manoj bajpay gets killed in satya you have that mahabharat thing in the background right that yeah, yeah. that kurukshetra thing that to me is like one haunting frame i mean i'm not sure that that comes under cinematography that uh, the, i don't that comes under production design would you say no no that's in a performance it's in the setting it is it is in i would say the blocking the scene i would say hmm. to the, for want of a better word hmm. and we shot that i i basically told manoj see amar shukla is dead you and go in them the patched patched up so hmm. there's no reason for the audience to believe there's any problem going to I mean, come now yeah, yeah, yeah. that half expecting another song to come yeah. maybe you know in that kind of a thing you just i i like uh, manura wrote one version saurav wrote one version i i said i called all the actors to make them sit and i i just said this is what the situation is you guys speak whatever you want when you go to a party somebody suddenly i everybody will be talking no one is really listening to what the other it's person is saying it's thing. a general yeah. this thing you create that and whenever you, you feel the right opportune moment you take the gun and shoot him i told go in you know and uh, when that happened even i was as shocked everybody in the whole unit was shocked at the suddenness of it because the whole cries cries and tak that sound and and the way manoj fell on the chair that that was the key see all these elements what my brief is what going nam they did and none of the actors knew what the other person was speaking hmm. the reacting spontaneously at any given point of time so that created a heightened sense of uh, reality which made the gunshot and manoj falling down so look so real mm. so that is nothing to do with cinematography cinematography yeah. okay there is no nothing to do with that see cinematography is an added element where it kind of uh, uh, like you know for example there is a shot in antam when in the mm. end uh, after nagarjuna dies i took a shot of the just zooming back from that and the camera keeps on going away almost mm. to 
leave them in their misery mm. and just go off. You know, now that is a very cinematic, though the short idea is mine, but that is where how the camera captures makes a difference. Mm. Like cinematography is, is an additional thing. It is not real, like a trolley or a zoom or whatever. Now the lighting is one part. Mm. See so the light and shade proper use, you know, and lot. But lot of times people don't understand. It's a combination of the actor's expression and the light lighting. It is not the lighting alone which can do. Mm. If Amitabh Bachchan's close up in Sarkar, you know, you just see the shades of the leaves moving, and lot of people think it's fantastic photography, which it is. Mm. But it's because Bachchan's expression. In the same lighting, if you remove Bachchan and put Shakti Kapoor, see what will happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a photographic yeah. image is a uh, is a combination of the actor, the look of the actor, the location, the costume. There are so many elements in the frame. It is recording it. Hmm. All of them together are creating a recorded image. So right. it is not the photographer alone, the cinematographer alone. Hmm. You know, that is what the point is. A cinematographer can have a point of view. Like very very few people have that, even in in Hollywood. Hmm. I I I, re I recently saw a, I mean uh, a straight to video film called Dead Mary. Okay. The first ten minutes of it is arresting cinematography because mm. I've never seen those kind of subjects being shot like that. Mm. Extremely what ordinary. What are the subjects? I haven't seen the the film. See, the film is very bad. Okay. The film is not the point. Why? Why? Because I could see the cameraman's greatness and right. which didn't reflect in the director's intelligence. Okay. That is how I would pick out who's mm. doing what. So normal, normal shots, which uh, nobody will think uh, how to compose it also, but he's done a brilliant job, the cinematographer. That is where I, I understand cinematography. Do you so, still keep learning? Like if you look at uh, Oliver Stone, for example, uh, Oliver Stone's uh, Natural Born Killers, and look, they're experiments, high experiments in cinematography. Hmm. It definitely creates an alternative layer of emotion, which is non-existent in the script. So I wanted to ask you this. Do you still keep learning new things about filmmaking and cinematography or about filmmaking till date? See, I'm all the time in, in touch with, uh, uh, with any kind of a cinematic technology. Hmm. I mean, but uh, I'm not into VFX. VFX. So VFX okay. is something I never believed in because I, I like to do realistic settings. Hmm. But uh, I like attitudes of filmmakers which reflects in, uh, in editing and the performances and the characterizations and cinematography. So that is where a director's attitude will come. So I'm interested in the people, not in the technology so much. Okay. But technology is just about uh, how you can manage to achieve that. Mm -hmm. So VFX technology is different. To create an alternative world, and that is a completely different thing you're talking about. Technology always existed, mm -hmm. even before VFX. Yeah. So editing is a technology. Using the camera movements is a technology. Right. Yeah. When is this expected to kick start, sir? See, we've given a deadline of May 20th mm. and for all the submissions to come. Are the applications the already phase. coming in? Yeah. Okay. Then the second phase will start of, uh, of the audition uh, video testing. Okay, what's the deadline that you have kept to it? Yeah, see, after the May 20th, mm. we mostly will be giving a couple of weeks for the Which? audition and okay. then we will start the show. Okay. And all the parallelly, the uh, director and all that will be going on. For example, the brief I gave to the director, hmm. and if they have the intelligence to understand, so the, the nuances of the performances of each of the, I wrote that in detail. Yeah, yeah, like the Not way so he's much looking about, down. Yeah, looking yeah, yeah, down, yeah. Hmm. the posture hmm. and the look on the actor's face. That is what the pure test. Right. The most important thing for a director, I believe, is to get performances from the actors. Now, hmm. Everything else is no problem. Okay. It, it goes this okay. way, that way, it doesn't make any difference. Hmm. If you look at the biggest uh, answer, it's a Godfather. No? Godfather is very simply, it's short, almost like a TV serial format. Mm -hmm. Very study moments, or just a block lens, and all that. But what is unforgettable is the characters. Okay. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. So just a couple of final questions. Because I'm sitting here with you, I just can't help but resist the temptation of ask, hmm. asking these questions. Have you been following what's happening with artificial intelligence tool called Sora? Yeah. What do you not, not very well, but yeah. Hmm. yeah. But have you seen those samples? Like yes, video yes. Samples? What do you think, sir? What's going to happen? Don't you think Yes. VFX artists, filmmakers? Yeah. But that is what any technology does, no? See, technology, hmm. if I give an example, hmm. 
when uh, in the 18th century or 19th century, the mm. samurai warriors were there. Mm. Okay. Now the samurai is a is like a four and a half feet long sword, mm. which they used to practice for 10 years, 12 years before they can, from the age of 10 or 12, you no, know, before they could be put in the principal army things. With the invention of the rifle, mm. it's gone. Because the rifle can shoot from 20 feet and this is 4 feet. Mm. So the entire generation of samurai warriors were over. So, the, or the drone technology, like entire air force of uh, all yeah, the countries yeah. is gone, redundant. Mm. So similarly, what the AI does in cinema and everything, not only what, what this is, if it is creating an image, you see, like eventually man becoming superman is the whole point of technology. <laughs> And AI basically took a new dimension. It, uh, like if the industrial revolution of the 60s, it uh, kind of replaced muscle. Mm. What you pull, what you push, what you lift, all that has been replaced by mm. machines. Now, AI has replaced the mind. Now, I also believe that AI is also a living being because we oh. just have this mindset because it is created. It's an evolution from the ape, the frog, to that to became human being. Why can't AI come from the human being? It's created okay. by human being, anyway. Okay, okay. It's created by the same material existing on the earth. It is not having different material. Yeah, it's not alien. Yeah, yeah. it's not alien. Yeah. Okay. okay. So when, I, I believe uh, AI will kill motivation for people. Mm. Mm. Like, for example, I, I, I lose my motivation. What motivation do I lose? I'll tell you. Mm. If I'm, I, it took me two years to understand Ayn Rand when I, when I was studying it in my engineering college. Mm. When I read the fountain had the address, the anthem to the new industrial revolution. Now, if uh, I go to AI and uh, I ask, ask it to give me in 100 words the principles of ab objectivism, it is giving. Mm -hmm. So, why the fuck did I say it for two years? Mm -hmm. Eventually, I, only, I also remember only that as the summation of what I understood from Ayn Rand. Right. And then if I'm asking it... Uh, what are the downside of objectivism in mm -hmm. comparison to any other economic systems and philosophical systems which prevail in the world, it is giving me in one second. Mm -hmm. And then when I ask it a question, which one do you think is better? It said, I don't have any opinion. So that is a very important line because if I know someone knows better than me, you know, then what happens is uh, I am following something because I am believing it. And if right. a person knows better than me, doesn't follow, I start questioning my own, my uh, own, belief, yeah, yeah, my yeah. own belief system. Mm. So today, I am only resorting to A for whatever I want to know. Whatever I want to do, first thing I go is to A. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And in every field, that will happen. Mm. And so you can't compete with AI mm. in any way. Like for example, if it is giving me, uh, let us say, uh, like one company, I know they were planning to do a mythological film and they spent crores of rupees in uh, investment on uh, artists, you know, concept artists and the locations, characters and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mid Journey has given a far better version yeah, without yeah. any money. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I think we are the last of the people and I, I don't mean it in a negative I mean, way. A neg scary, negative uh, way. It is just a fact of life, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, if you are smart, you'll use it to the best extent before you die. If you, try, you can't resist it. Mm. You, you can't wish it away. That won't happen. Okay. Like if an art director, if, 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 I'm, if I'm taking a picture and uh, I'm asking you to, in GPT-4, to give me options of this, and it is giving me, you know, where is art director? Mm. Like in, yeah. in everything. Mm. So why you would lose motivation is if you're running race. If the other guy is about 10 feet, you will still put, you know, 20 feet also you will put. Mm. If it's one mile away, you will stop. So it will make human beings stop thinking. That's what it will do. So when the calculator came in 40 years back, mm. we used to read uh, 2, 2, are 4, 2, this, 2, yeah. 4, is 8. We stopped. You mm. completely trust the calculator knows better than you. You might uh, doubt yourself when you're trying to put manually. You won't doubt the calculator. The same thing will happen in every field. And are you like, did you try virtual production and all? Yeah. Is it something that excites you, sir? See, that, that's what I do. I, I generally do not have the affinity for that because okay. I want to see in front of me what's happening. Huh. Yeah, that is the kind of cinema I hmm. generally believe in. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Not that I'm completely against it, right. but my natural affinity is towards that. Realism. Realism, yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Sir, I can keep picking your brain and keep talking. You are an ocean. But thank you very much for the time. One final question. This is for me, not for the audience. Yeah. This is something that I wanted to ask you personally. I do a lot of interviews and generally I keep them in a mix of English and Telugu. And every time I interview a Telugu person and I talk in English, I get all these harsh comments in the comment section saying that why don't you talk in uh, Telugu, 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 Telugu. So what is your take on this language? Hmm. Do you think language is just a medium of communication or do you also see it like yeah. it's an important see, part I, of our I culture? Mean, that see, needs I, to be? I feel, uh, hmm. see, the, the question is when you're talking, who you're talking to is a point. Hmm. Okay. This conversation, hmm. what we are having, whether it's your film or any other questions you ask, I hmm. feel it is meant for people with reasonable knowledge and intelligence. Hmm. So I'm catering to them. Okay. So to dumb this down to talk to somebody who wants to understand, in, in, in today's time, if you're still there, you don't need to listen to this conversation. That's how I see. But there's something else I could be talking in Telugu. Because right. it, that, that is what I said, you have to first identify okay. where you want to reach this. Okay. Yeah. If I'm talking about something like Vuham, I probably would stick to Telugu. Telugu. Yeah. Right. Perfect. I think, yeah. Perfect. So thank you very much. Always a pleasure talking to you. Love this conversation. Thank you, sir. Hope you weren't bored. No, I really enjoyed it.